Geno Smith trying to build on his 2022 Pro Bowl season. If it's not posted on Instagram, it didn't happen. The NFL posting Geno's workouts here, talking to people in the Seahawks building. They're expecting an even better year for Geno Smith in 2023. As for Chad Ryder's Seahawks mock draft, 10 picks for the Seahawks. So many that we only included the first four rounds here. Tyree Wilson, the edge rusher out of Texas Tech, going first. Then he has them trading out of 20, down to 27, and selecting Cody Mock, the North Dakota State lineman there in the first round. For much more on the Seahawks and their draft discussion, we welcome in Bridget Condon here in studio. Mark Ross joins us once again. And Bridget, when you talk about the Pete Carroll and John Schneider era, they've had so much success. They're not used to being in this position, are they? Yeah, they've called it a marriage. This will be their 14th year together drafting, and they're drafting in the top five for the first time together. They talked this week about the excitement and the challenge and just having more research on guys, more accessibility, more coverage. They've seen a lot of guys at Pro Days. We've all seen their selfie tours with some of the top quarterbacks, but it's not just the top five pick that they have. It's five picks in the top 83 that's a big challenge for them they of course have pick number five and pick 20 in the first round and Pete Carroll said this week that you know that's a challenge in itself because you get ready you do all your research you pick at five and then you can't relax and kind of wait to see how the rest of the round figures itself out you got to go right back to the board figuring out what you're going to do at 20 either stay or like Chad Ryder just said in his mock draft trade back so a lot of action for this team but a lot of excitement they're hoping to build off of the success that they have in last year's draft and kind of add getting some splash players with them. But if history is going to repeat itself, and we have no idea what they're going to do, even Pete Carroll and John Schneider said this week that they don't even know what they're going to do because there's so many scenarios having those two picks in the first round. But over the past decade, they've only kept their own first round pick once, and they've only picked in the first round five times since 2013. So keep that in mind when thinking about that 20th pick could see them trading back. Mm -hmm. Well, Omar, Bridget, just the difference of planning, game planning for the fifth pick versus the 20th pick. When you have the fifth pick and you're in your draft meetings, you just got to count. One, two, three, four guys that we know could go, and we need our fifth guy, and this is it. So it's so much easier to game plan when you're picking at the top of the draft because you just have to get through five guys that you feel really comfortable about that when you get to your pick, this is going to be our guy. And then if you are going to trade out of that pick, as John Schneider said in his press conference, these draft talks are really going to heat up in the next couple of days, particularly even right leading up to the draft and on draft day where we know we're only going to accept a certain amount, a certain amount of draft picks to get out of this pick to get down to a certain point. So that is so much easier to game plan for that fifth pick. Now, when you get to the 20th pick, you still go through your draft scenarios, you still go through your meetings, you still talk about it. But there's so many more variables that take place for that 20th pick as opposed to the fifth pick. You have your group of guys that you know you'll feel comfortable with. You have a group of players that you think will be there, but you still have to wait for the draft to unfold. And then as the draft unfolds, you don't know which player that you may have targeted in the top 10 who you want to go up and get. You talk about all these scenarios, but it's so, as I said, so many more variables that take place that you kind of let, let the draft come to you at that point. But when you're at number five, it's really so much easier to game plan. So they're facing both the best of both leading up to this draft throughout their draft meetings, Omar. There's been a lot of talk about quarterback with either 5 or 20 for the Seahawks. They haven't drafted a quarterback in the first round since Rick Meyer in 1993. It's been 30 years now. So when you look at draft week next week, Bridget, what do the Seahawks have lined up? Okay, so, you know, John Schneider kind of joked in his press conference, funny guy, uh, this week saying that they have multiple GMs, multiple head coaches. Everybody at this time thinks they're an expert, right? Everybody has their guy that they want them to take. So today and tomorrow, they'll meet with coaches, hear their scenarios and what guys that they like. And then Sunday, it's more of a presentation, a reflection with scouts. They're taking the information they learn from the coaches today and tomorrow and seeing how that changes their boards. And then Tuesday, they'll go to Joe Jody Allen and present to her their scenarios, multiple scenarios, as Mark just mentioned, and what they imagine that they will do with pick number five and pick number 20. And then John Schneider, Schneider said it's going to be him and Pete Carroll just kind of reflecting, talking with agents, other 
teams around the league. And, you know, this is something, like I mentioned, 14 years together. This is a marriage. They've got it down. They talked about that this week, about how they respect each other and their egos and work together. So, you know, this is nothing new for these two going into their 14th draft together. Some other notable positions they've never drafted in the first round, the Pete and John era wide receiver, tight end, interior lineman, both on the offensive and defensive side of the ball.